yeah, yeah. I love that, JP. That's some definite Almond Brothers sound, Southern Groove, my friend. Welcome back to the Humagoo. No buddy. doubt. Ah, thank you. We were just talking off air about all those great Southern influences that you have, uh, you know, Dwayne Almond and all that great stuff. And today, there's only one category in the Grammys, you were telling me. Yeah, you know, and, it, and it's really about the TV show that the Grammys. The Grammy Award ceremony is, yeah. and there's so so many categories that the, the whatever the network it was on ABC or CBS told them they had to reduce the length of the show. So what they did was they cut categories and they cut. There weren't that many blues categories. I think it was like best contemporary blues, best traditional blues, best blues male vocalist, best female blues vocalist, and maybe one more. But I, I'm pretty sure they cut it all down to just best blues album, which there is. There's a lot of people that get um, cut out, that get left out, that um, get cut out. Unfortunately, I mean, myself with my radio show that I started putting together, the music is all provided by promoters and Betsy Brown. Everything on my show is provided by artists. Or I hear the music you guys got, and it is the best. And I'm understanding why there isn't more categories, radio stations around Milwaukee area playing this stuff, you know? I'm bl- I don't have enough time. This is a hobby, but it's so many people, my brother-in-law, you can, guys got to hear these tunes that these people are playing and nobody would know. You know, yeah. through internet and stuff. And what you guys are producing out there. Um I'm sorry, but the music today, I have to have an open mind, but we don't have the the things we grew up with. Um, you know, the songs that kind of carry in your head. I guess they do, but they carry in a mirror of a, I don't know, a, theory, a lyric theme, I guess, in their heads. Huh? Not musical, should I say. Well, with well, the yeah, the industry... Right, the industry has become... has become completely about the bottom line which which is making money for somebody else not necessarily the artist because even though all these famous musicians that we grew up listening to the who the allman brothers yeah uh, um the musicians made lots of money but the record company made 10 times as much money and so now it's even in my opinion more more blatant than ever there's still people out there like myself making good music but Mm -hmm. the record company has this is what we're going to do for you we think you're going to be good we think we we think you're good we think you're going to sell some records we're going to give you a one record deal and if your record sells and we make money we'll extend your contract nobody anymore gets a multiple album deal it's you, you get one shot at it if you fit the suit so to speak and it works and your record sells then they'll give you money to uh, make another record and promote you some more, but it's no longer about the art at the highest level, like the big major label companies. Sure, you have some exceptions, but um, I don't. I don't know how people get signed to a major deal anymore. I know when back in the eighties, you sent demo tapes out and you tried to get an A and R an A and R guy to come to one of your gigs especially the music that I've always played, it's always been about playing live. Yeah, we, we try to write the best songs we can, but the style of music that I play, blues and blues rock, is about the live experience. Yeah, and it's um, it's just, a, I'm trying to be open-minded about the hip-hop and the rap, and, and that's kind of what they do. So you either have to go into yeah. that, but again, I'm just blessed, and this is out here, so I just keep cranking the best I can to your tunes and all these great blues artists. Uh, buddy Guy, Tom Hambridge, my mind. Now, that yeah. one, the independent blues, uh, Nola Sessions, and all that stuff coming from Betsy Brown. And then to hear your stuff, JP, um, you know, it's just beginning of everything for everybody. I mean, you keep it going. Yeah, well, you, well, thank you for doing what you do to keep it going, and that's part of why I do this. Um, I have no misgivings about uh, fame and fortune. I love this music. I'll be playing to the day I die. I play guitar every day, even if it's just for 30 seconds, if I'm traveling or if I'm practicing or if I'm playing a gig. Sometimes I play two gigs in a day. I'll do a morning gig and an afternoon gig or something. 
or the afternoon and an evening. And I, I think that the greatest cultural contribution the United States of America has given the world is the music of the 20th century. Yeah. And my goal is to keep it alive and keep it going. And um, at the CD, my CD release show last week, um, it was at this coffee shop uh, music venue. It turned into a music venue at night. and But they also sell homemade gelato. And people mm-hmm. were coming in off the street to buy an ice cream and coming and sitting down and going, hey, this guy's good. Let's mm-hmm. sit for a little while and listen to that. And that's the whole idea. Like, hey, listen, get there's good music out there. Go out and see live music. You don't have to just get on one of these streaming services and pay ten dollars a month for them to tell you what songs you should listen to. Get out, use your use your 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 mind and support local artists in your community and remember that people are out there still making quality music. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that you're in the D C area. And that comes to our next tune a little bit too. We're gonna play blues for Casey. <laughs> that, that's right. kind of a, little, a little bit about our uh a guy up there in the, the White House, should I say, and uh, working on the White House blues. Same stuff in the yeah, Beltway. That, That's a whole different vibe up there, I imagine, huh? Yeah, it's a whole different vibe, and, and it's kind of funny. My last album um, the, was called The Road to Mississippi. Yeah. That Betsy Brown also did the promo for. Um, it got reviewed by a blues... I don't remember if it was a magazine or a blue society in Florida, and the reviewer criticized me for not mm. writing more politically charged songs. And I have always thought that entertainers should entertain and politicians should do their jobs as well. And I'll offer my opinion to someone, but I, I rarely do so from the stage when I'm performing because people are there to hear me play and sing, not right. tell me what the politics should be. But the situation that we're in, and, and um, this is not actually a comment on party politics and what, what your affiliation belief is with a party or any party. Um, this, to me, just our lo- my local newspaper is the Washington Post. And you see the stories that were coming out every day in the early days of the Trump administration of them literally not knowing where the light switches are in the West Wing. And I, I have all kinds of insider information about things that incoming in, outgoing administrations do to incoming administrations that I won't get into. But I, I just wrote that song from the point of view of someone that went to work wanting to help make America great again and make change to this country and got there and realized that not only were they in the swamp they were drowning drowning in the swamp and um (laughs) i wrote those lyrics first like i mentioned earlier this this album is a little bit of a departure for me where i've started to try to change my songwriting i usually write a, a, a a melody or a riff and come up with the rhythm and music of a song and then add lyrics get inspiration from from the music but this is another one of the songs like the ballad of a burglar that the lyrics came first and i fooled around with several different formats before i found what i dubbed the mississippi john hurt style the the one two four five type of thing progression and uh, it fit it, it was it was amazing i literally wrote all the words and kind of had it in a shuffle and I kind of didn't feel right. And I said, well, let me, let me try it. Working with Duke Levine, who was the co-producer on the album, mm-hmm. he suggested I try to put it into one of my finger style patterns. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, let me think about it. And I literally just started playing that pattern. And it, the words fit beat for beat, you know, uh, syllable for syllable. Into that. I was like, oh, my God, the song is done. I just literally put a capo on the guitar at the second fret and did that little finger picking pattern that Mississippi John Hurt and all the classic Piedmont players do. And I, and I added a little twist, a uh, seventh chord in it somewhere, and that was it. But it came together real quick once I figured out where what style it should be in. Once Duke gave you that little input, and that producer is so important, that little person on the side that understands music, should I say, how to add a little bit, add a little takeaway, or whatever it may be. 
put you on the right direction. Yeah, and, and that's that's part of the beauty of his genius. He is not just a phenomenal musician, guitar, mandolin, man, mandola, um, but he he has over seven hundred album credits of his own, and so he and he's played with some some heavy heavyweights, and so he has he's really a, a musicologist. Right, he, he um, went to the New England Conservatory of Music and has a degree in jazz performance. Um, oh, and was playing. He, he has older brothers, so he started playing guitar when he was like six or seven years old. And his knowledge of music is unbelievably vast, and so he draws upon these things and and will give you input and say, "Yeah, that that's okay, but maybe you should try this." And it's it's what he suggests and the way he suggests. He's always, always positive. And, it, and I'm honored to call him my friend. And it was the privilege of, of my musical career to work with him. All right, let's do that right now. Blues for Casey. Thank you. We'll be right back. into downtown it takes a local route I get off at the final stop and walk the last half mile I try to wear a happy face I try to force a smile I'm working at a house on Pennsylvania Avenue some it might seem fun, but I just feel so damn abused. I sit down at my desk and try to act not so surprised. It's harder than you think it is because of all the lies. 